Hi guys, it's me. I'm back. You ask me where I've been. Busy, 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 busy. But I'm going to show you um, a few things about patterns. I've had some comments about symmetry and about working with patterns. Sometimes I do freestyle. I do freestyle a lot because I've been a pattern maker for about 20 years. So I like the idea of clothes that I can play around and not be so precise as I am in my everyday working life. But I can play around and see how things come out with just the shapes that are in my head. But I've imported this pattern so you can see what it's like to work with a symmetric symmetrical pattern and uh, some things that I do for fit. So right now I'm just mirroring the pattern. Um, this is a basic uh, dress pattern that I have. And I've never used it before, so that's why I'm tweaking it and fiddling around with it on the Alva form. The Alva size 6 is what I've uh, adjusted this dress to be. So I'm just making my placements, using the tools to, I guess, uh, you know, go over the things that don't come pre-existing when you import a pattern. That's a DXF pattern that I imported. Um, so right now, um, like I said, the pattern was drafted for a size six. The Alva form is a size six. However, it does not fit. So I will be going through some things to, um, to show you how you can make things fit a little bit better. So I made this quick little video for you guys. I'm adding the darts because the darts come in as baselines. And if you know what I mean by baselines, those blue lines that you can't really edit. So I'm just try, um, you know, trial and error. I'm positioning things as I think that they should be according to what the pattern lays out. And then I will stitch it up and fit it and see if I actually like what this pattern is, is uh, doing. And you'll see that I do not. I have some issues with this pattern, especially the back. But we get to that. I digress. So I'm going to follow the pattern and I'm going to stitch it up. Now here for this little teeny tiny dart, it won't let you um, add a dart, so you kind of have to add a line and then cut it because the dart is so teeny tiny that it's very hard to get the program to make a small dart like this. So I just cut it in half and I mirrored on the other side. So it did it on both sides. Fantastic, eh? Um, so now let's see, I think I'm ready to uh, start stitching, but I always stitch too soon. I always leave something out. Um, I don't know. It's just the way that I work. I always like stitch it and then I'm like, oh, I forgot the shoulder. I don't know what it is. You'll see in every video. I forget the shoulders. I don't know what it is. Um, so I think I should start with the shoulders next time. But I like to do the side seams first, get everything evened out and then place it on the form. And that's when I usually find out that I didn't do the side seam. <laughs> Once I don't see it at the top. Um, the stitching at the top. Now I'm doing something a little bit, um, you know, that's good. I'm adding my darts. Now this pattern comes with darts already, but actually the stitch lines also have darts. So I like to add the stitch line darts as well, um, as well as the darts that are pre-existing in the pattern. So you'll see that I try to catch every dart. I mean, every notch. <laughs> I'm so used to saying darts, so many darts, but yes. So for every notch, I kind of just try to make sure that I get it so that when the pattern is printed out, the person sewing it can know what is going on with these lines. So as I said, I use the Alva form for basic fit. When I'm working with patterns, I use my other creative forms when I'm just being creative. And that's the beauty of the program is that you can do both. You can just be creative and try things out or you can work from patterns or build your own patterns and blocks. Uh, I'm going to do a video about the module configurator. Such a big name. So now I've stitched it up and now I'm going to add the zipper. What I usually do is um, you'll see I sew the zipper on backwards all the time. These just little things that you do when you're working. Now the zipper should be sewn top to bottom, not bottom to top. So that's why my zipper is at the bottom, but you can reverse your direction just like I did right there. Now there's all of this fabric in the back. I don't get it, but this pattern is kind of not straight at the back. So I take it in a little bit. 
at the top and then now that I did that my zipper is gone so I like to set in the zipper so that I could see where it is on the pattern but the pattern is not really shaped like that so don't get on my case about doing that but for the 3d uh, visualization I like to do that and set it in uh, just like a quarter of an inch so it looks better on the figure but in an actual pattern I would make that a straight line so now I try to figure out why these darts are like balloon darts um, and just try to fix them a little bit uh, there are certain tools that will allow you to make things look a lot better um, so let's take a look at some of them so now this dart is just too low to me in the back and it's not taking in enough fabric so once I get it to take in enough fabric I realize that the position of the dart is very low and I want to raise it up just a bit but I also don't like yes it's just too much fabric near the underarm so I just keep tweaking it a little bit by little by little to see what I can do to get that area flattened and now it's not so bad I just really feel like the front and back waistline positions are different so I will get around to that and fixing that you'll see now that I've made the back a little bit smaller now I have drag lines at the uh, bust art so I will save this pattern first because I'm pretty okay with it this is block dress tutorial thank you very much looking at all my files anyway guys um so this is what it's like working with the pattern when you don't have symmetry and I got a comment about this left side to right side dart shapes you can always tweak it however this program does not have the subtle nuances of dart making so you have to kind of know where you want your darts and you may have to um, steam your darts just to get them to look flat uh, they may be the right size but when the program stitches the darts especially in a particle distance of 15 or higher they kind of stick out they start getting a little bit puffy so I'm trying to get the puffiness out I use a little steam and BAM just a little steam a little I don't steam the whole thing now I'm gonna to try to see if I can lift the fabric out of that side and uh, it means I'm gonna to have to open up that bust dart I'll raise that up a little bit but now I've got more drag lines so now that I've raised up the, the position I need to open up that dart a little bit yay I got most of it out this is to the other side love the pink line it tells me I'm very close to where I need to be and then we can do that now I turn on the simulation uh, to see how it is fitting and I see that I really uh, did a little bit too much on the back and it's kind of tight fitting so I'm gonna make those adjustments and open up that back a little bit and just make it a nice you know pleasing little shift dress uh, for the back neck I see I have this thing there but it's not really the problem at the top it's really the cross pull at the neck because I did make that go in a little bit so I'll just do that like open it up a quarter of an inch and then uh, release that a little bit and she's a little bit better so I'm not too worried about the teeny tiny little red lines but I think she's okay she's a good block and I tried to steam that out and I was not happy because sometimes the steam is too much and then I don't adjust it I always get those little drag lines in the front so I'm just gonna make this dart a little bit longer I think that will uh, I make it shorter first and then I realize that no I need to be longer so um, this is really about fitting getting the garment to look the way that you want it to look and trying to keep it as symmetrical as possible if all else fails I will cut it in half and make side A and B when I am finished with all this fitting make side A and B mirror each other uh, just to let you know Chloe is making some changes where you'll be able to mirror the left and the right side in the future pattern makers will love it you guys are are in for some really really cool treats with the 5.1 release but I'm not even supposed to be saying that so I just get so excited anyway yes we're talking about mirroring patterns and that is something that 
you know, you have to have a few little tricks. So just cut it in half and then mirror it and stitch it back together without making any changes. I'm just going to add some texture, add some color, and then I'm going to give you guys a nice little round table. Now I'll tell you one thing I tend to do is overfit. <laughs> just some things I'm like, eh. once I added the fabric, I got totally different fit. That will happen. Once you add the fabric, it will totally fit not the same as the default fabric. So then you have to go in and like retweak what you already tweaked because if you want it to be in this fabric, you're going to have to shape it accordingly. So now my drag lines are back under the bust. So I got too much fabric under there. And now I feel like because of the fabrication the armhole is just so droopy and i try to move it and then i'm like you know what it's the fabric that's doing all of this so why not change the fabric <laughs> now one thing i like about the program is that you can keep the color and just change the fabric in your physical properties panel and where it says preset you can add the fabrication but it will not change the color or texture a lot of times people just change the fabric and add the fabric to the fabric panel, but that uh, you're incorporating all the fabric properties. If you want just the weight and the simulation, then do it in the uh, preset properties. So right now I'm going to up the uh, particle distance or lower the particle distance so I can get nice clean lines on my outs outer edges. And let me take a few nips and bumps out of it. So I don't want to overdo it with this file. Like I said, as soon as you put it in the fabric, you're going to see all these different things and different reactions to your points and notches or your points and your seam shapes. And you're going to tweak. Do not be afraid to tweak and do not be afraid to simulate and simulate again. So now I see that there's this little bump there, but it's actually not in the pattern. It's in the way that it's uh, sitting on the avatar. So honestly, I just left it like that alone because I know that I will, after I lower the particle distance, then I'm going to be tweaking that thing. Actually, I can see it now. The left side and the right side is two different lengths. If you caught that, you're good because I just caught it. So I have to go back and cut my front in half and mirror it so the left side and the right side can be the same and then I will mm -hmm. merge the seams so guys this is pretty much it I'm happy with the dress as a block I'm gonna do some things with it so you can see how you can use your blocks to make different dresses or different um, different styles out of one pattern uh, that's the beauty of Chloe you're able to use all of that so now I'm going to show you the simulation and that's that thank you guys